Hi, it's Tom here, and in this video you'll learn how to write Node.js JavaScript Lambda functions which recurse, or in other words, call themselves. And AWS Lambda functions are a great way to execute short running processes without worrying about what hardware they're going to run on. But sometimes we've got a requirement to run a longer lived process, but unfortunately AWS imposed a 15 minute execution limit. So a couple of examples of why we might want to run longer lived processes. Firstly, we could have a CloudFormation script, which calls a Lambda, which waits for an SSL certificate to be created, which could take several hours. Or we could be processing a large S3 file, which might take more than 15 minutes. And one way to get around this limitation is to have our Lambda function do some work, check if the work is finished, and if not, call itself again, i.e. recurse. And if you're from a development or coding background, you'll be familiar with this concept of recursion and some of its pitfalls as well. But there's nothing to worry about as long as we're conscious of the fact that the recursive lambda function must have a stop condition, otherwise it's at risk to run forever. And to make the most of this video, you'll need a bit of JavaScript knowledge around promises and the async and await keywords. And if you're not familiar with these concepts, then check out the article that I've linked in the description below, then come back to this video to make the most of it. And as a summary of exactly what we're going to be doing with this Lambda function, we're going to have a function that sleeps for two seconds. This will prevent our Lambdas from firing too quickly. And then it's going to check that the number of iterations of all the Lambdas hasn't reached a predefined recursion limit. And if it has reached that limit, then the lambda is going to stop, and this is the lambda stop condition. But it has, if it hasn't reached the predefined limit, then the lambda is going to use the AWS Lambda API to call invoke on itself to recurse. So let's get right into the code. So I've just logged into the AWS management console here, and I'm going to full screen to make things easier to see. And first up, we're just going to go to services and I'm going to select Lambda from the list under compute. And what I'm going to do is just create a new function and author from scratch. And I'm going to create a Lambda, which is going to be called recursive Lambda, very imaginative, I know. And it's going to be Node.js, i.e. JavaScript. So I'm just going to hit create function here. And hey presto, we're on the Lambda overview page and down here we've got the, the place where we can actually enter code. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this code and we're going to start from scratch. Firstly by defining a variable called AWS, which is essentially our reference to the AWS SDK the JavaScript SDK, which is provided to us by default by AWS. And then we're going to have a variable Lambda, which is going to create a new instance of AWS.Lambda. And then we're going to define a sleep function. And you don't need to know the details about this function. It's just important to know that we have the ability to sleep for a predefined amount of time so that we're not creating too many lambdas when we run this and it starts recursing. And then we're going to have a constant recursion limit, which I'm going to set to five. You can choose whatever you want, but this is going to form our stop condition so that the lambda stops recursing when it uh, has recursed five times in a row. And then we'll define the exports.handler as an async method and by the way the async means that we can use the await keyword so we can use await to wait for sleep to happen which we're going to sleep for two seconds and then I'm going to define another constant called iteration and that's going to use this event variable which is essentially the the information that's passed to the lambda you can think of it as the request we're going to get the iteration field from that event variable and if it's not defined we're going to set it to 1. So the first time we execute this lambda we won't define that so it's going to default to 1. We'll log out the iteration number and then here comes our stop condition. So we want to say that if the iteration is 
less than or equal to the recursion limit. So if the number of iterations is less than the limit, then we're going to call the lambda again. And we'll implement that in a minute. Otherwise, we're going to return finished executing on iteration, whatever the iteration is. So if we're at the limit, we're going to return this string. Otherwise, we're going to call the lambda again. First up, we're going to be defining some parameters which we need to be able to invoke a lambda using the AWS JavaScript SDK. And the first thing is the function name, which is what we call this lambda, recursive lambda. Secondly is the invocation type. And you've got two options here. You can invoke synchronously or asynchronously. And we want the asynchronous version because we want when the new lambda gets invoked, we want the old one to shut down. And that's what the event invocation type means. It means asynchronous. And then we're going to define the payload. And we're passing the iteration plus one. So every time we call the next lambda, we're incrementing the iteration. And that way, at some point, we're going to reach the recursion limit. And then we actually call the invoke API. So we're going to define a promise and inside that promise we're going to call lambda.invoke with params and we're going to pass a function which is a callback function to handle error scenarios or success scenarios. So if we do have an error, we're going to call promise reject. Otherwise, we're going to resolve with the data. And that's it. So let me just zoom out a little bit. So here we have our lambda defined. We've got a recursion limit of five and it's going to sleep for two seconds and it's going to check the stop condition making sure that this iteration is less than the recursion limit and then we're defining parameters with the function name, invocation type and the payload and then we are returning a promise from this lambda and that promise contains an invocation of lambda.invoke, the JavaScript uh, AWS API, and that's either going to resolve or reject depending on the result of that invocation. So what we can do now is click save up here and then test and we'll get a pop up to configure a test event to send to the Lambda. Now we don't actually depend on a test event but we'll create one anyway and just call it a test event and accept all the defaults. Click, click create and let's save and then hit test again. And you can see down here we've got a big fat error and that's saying error message user uh, and then it's got a recursive lambda role is not authorized to perform a lambda invoke function so that's fine and what we're going to have to do is to edit the the role that's created automatically by AWS here and include an additional policy so that the lambda can invoke itself <laughs> So we'll just jump out of full screen mode and scroll down here to where it says execution role. Click view the recursive lambda role. And here we want to attach an additional policy which we're going to write from scratch. So select create policy. And we're just going to edit the JSON and input some JSON which in our case is is a statement 
which provides the allow effect and the action is lambda invoke function and the resource is the lambda ARN and I'm going to grab that yep it's at the end of the error message so that's going to allow invoke lambda on that specific lambda select review I'm going to call this invoke lambda create policy and now I'm going to go back to the page where I'm adding policies to the recurse lambda role and I'm just going to search for that invoke lambda it looks like I need to refresh the page and then search invoke lambda select this policy and then click attach and now if I go back to the role I've got the invoke lambda policy attached to this role so I'm going to run this test again here and in my experience it does take some time for changes to roles to propagate through so it may not happen the first time okay it's propagated through and you can see here that I've got a successful result and let's take a look at the logs where we can see the logs from the first lambda that got executed and it's printing out iteration one and in order for us to view the full logs of all the different lambdas that got invoked from this recursion we need to go over and have a look in CloudWatch so let's select services again and we're going to go down to CloudWatch which is under management and governance and I'm going to go to log groups on the left here and then we've got a log group for our lambda which is recursive lambda and we've got streams here we want to be picking the most recent one we've only got one right now and in this stream if I zoom in a little bit we can see the log output so we've got iteration 1 iteration 2 iteration 3 4 5 and 6 and you can see on the timings here that these are all around two seconds apart so we've got 24 26 and 28 so we can see that the the recursion was successful here and we had the initial iteration and then we had five additional iterations up to the recursion limit of five so all in all that was pretty successful I think <laughs> So thanks for watching and hopefully you've now seen how you can write a recursive Node.js Lambda function and maybe you can use this technique in one of your own projects. And in the description below I'll provide the GitHub gist, the code for this example, and some links to some documentation which will hopefully be able to give you a bit more depth um, and understanding on this topic. So if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button, otherwise I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.